Hello everyone, welcome to Raising Vibrations. You're with Sam today. And today's video, we're gonna be looking at Pluto moving direct. Uh, we're gonna be talking about some of the um, energies that are taking place with the charts as Pluto goes direct. And uh, hopefully we can kind of uh, understand a little bit about what it means to navigate through this current phase um, of energy that seems to be impacting us here at the moment. Okay. so. Uh, for most of you that have watched the new moon video in Libra, um, one of the things that I felt was essential to touch upon, and this was something that myself and Jen have actually spoken about quite a lot. And um, I think two days ago, when it was actually yesterday, we had like a super long uh, in-depth discussion about, you know, all the different types of layering that exists within our human psychology and, you know, especially around, what it means to have a specific uh, role in your uh, masculinity or, or your sense of feminine aspects of yourself and how those have become in a sense distorted and all of the unresolved anger and rage that exists in both of those um, egos. And one of the things that I felt was really inspirational after, you know, having that conversation and also, you know, going to be, very much about what I think Pluto will represent to us is the idea of that this next phase for us will have a lot to do with trying to make sense of a lot of shadow that is very present with us in the world at the moment and how we are in an unconscious way as a collective in a more consensus, uh, you know, on the consensus realm that aren't aware of the shadow of themselves or that aren't aware of these deeper psychological um, effects that have taken place in our lives, you know, um, how that's playing out and how that is, you know, causing a tremendous amount of, of uh, pain and suffering. And, you know, naturally speaking, one of the things that was spoken about during the uh, new moon in Libra, and of course we've got a lot of energy in Libra at the moment, is polarization. You know, and it's it's actually scary. You know, I'm I'm going to be really sort of upfront and honest over here. I'm I'm really um, afraid on some level of how we can be as a human race, and particularly here in the West, because of course this is where the majority of our conversation is taking place. How easily we can be polarized by propaganda how easily we can be polarized through, um, you know, our, our ideals, the, our perspective, our truth, what we think is truth, what we are convinced by. And so there's a lot of things in my own personal um, perception at the moment that I think uh, is essential for us to, to consider or contemplate as I, you know, as I kind of like feel into this myself. Um, and then this is this is a lot to do with Pluto direct today and the the kind of nature of the energy at the moment and, and what potentially we could do um, during this phase to support our ability to make sense of things and that's another thing that seems to be very clear to me ironically is that um, a lot of information exists out there in the world um, the internet has brought us a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge to us and depending on the level in which we seek to resonate with information will become very much the framework for how we actually perceive reality and so in some sense we are being influenced deeply by the way that the internet interacts with us and how we interact with it and how that shapes our worldview and in in a really again ironic way and you can sit with this and kind of contemplate a little bit about this is you know, how much of the internet has exposed us to the information and, and awareness, but how much of it, as we take it in, actually narrows us. It's like a weird little thing that I've observed is we can become so awake to all of the multiple fractals of information that exists, ranging from studying this to learning about that. And yet, 
what we can also observe is how we can become narrow-minded in only saying this is what's the truth because that's what you've taken in and when it sort of conflicts with another person our psychological like relationship to not feeling comfortable when another person's perception sort of interfaces with ourselves and that being something that that i see we're struggling with at the moment and that's actually why i chose this picture um you know michelangelo's uh, connection and it's zoomed in because you can only really see uh, the, to the two hands, but this of course is uh, in, in texts, Adam and God's hand trying to reach each other in this way. And I think this picture speaks volumes to me in terms of what we are, what, what the landscape seems to look like at the moment from my eyes, what I sense and feel intuitively looking at the astrology and how these um, heavenly bodies are bringing gravity. So uh, just to very make this clear, the, the planetary energies provide us with awareness and they provide us with awareness by um, moving through the uh, energetic field and it pulls our attention to that place. And so our attention moves into those spheres and we are observing what is there, right? So that's why you'll notice with Pluto through Capricorn for the last 10 years and such, We've been heavily focused on our responsibility and what that means to, to understand life. So climate, ch uh, uh, climate change as an example is one thing. It's like we're, all of us are trying to police each other about what's the appropriate thing to do. And you know, if you're not onto that, then there's something wrong with you. And there's so much disconnect in, a, in an age where the idea of connection, it seems to be the thing that... Um, is coming with the internet and so again this image speaks volumes to me in terms of the energy because it's libra right it's like how do we actually make connection not only to us as human beings in a physical form but to our own spiritual nature right and that of course has a lot to do with um the the new moon and libra and what it's set up for us you know so i've got the chart over here and, and let's go ahead and actually look at that for us there we go and um, let me just get my little marker. Okay, today we're going to use blue. All right. So here's Pluto at the moment, sitting at 20 degrees. You can see there's a little S next to it. And what that represents is um, the S stands for stationary. So just for all of you that are new to listening to me speak and, and how I talk about evolutionary astrology, um, there are two points okay there are two points when you will see s on a planet the first point is when the planet or let me just do it to this way when you see an s there it stands for stationary okay so it's standing still in the context of its movement and it's a very pivotal uh, point within the the cycle of a planet's uh, it's, you know, movement. It's a very, very pivotal point. It's very, very important. So when you've got, you've got these two points, you'll have an S just before Pluto goes direct and you'll have an S just before Pluto goes retrograde. So if, you know, if, if the logic circuitries are working with us, we'll acknowledge that, okay, so a planet will have two stationary points and these will occur just before it switches its cycle, i.e. before it goes retrograde and before it goes direct. And the reason why it's pivotal is because when you breathe in, think of a planet in a retrograde form. So when a planet is in retrograde, it's like we're inhaling. So we're going inward to the in form, okay? When a planet is moving forward, it is exhale. So it's like energy moving outwards and exploring, yang, right? But when it is at S, it is the transition between the point of inhale and exhale. And there is stillness. It's like there is just God or there is just the universe or it just is the nature or isness, you know, whatever you want to call it. And so it's in that period that insights drop. And particularly when a planet goes direct. So in this case, Pluto is moving direct. So the, the, the S within the spectrum or the, the the yeah the spectrum of this planet moving back and forth the s will represent a sense of illumination 
So it's like, ah, oh, okay, so that's what that means. Okay, so that's what that means. And then the planet goes direct and we initiate or plant the seeds of that awareness as the planet goes forward. But when the planet goes direct, uh, sorry, retrograde, that S will be more tension. It will be like energy has built up. And then as it hits the S point, and it turns retrograde, it's like a release. It's a release of all that pressure. And you can actually think of it like this, that when that, when that pressure gets released, it's like an elastic band that's been stretched. And as soon as the planet goes retrograde, the elastic band gets let go and the energy moves all the way back to the center. So it's like kind of releasing all that stress, going all the way back to the center, and then it turns direct and it goes ahead again. And that's how we actually sort of like evolve and that's how our awareness has evolved. And that's why things have a progressive nature to it. So if you look at, for instance, um, in 2011, and you look at where we are today in terms of Pluto and Capricorn matters, you can see that there is a kind of progression in the way that we have integrated new forms into our lives. And whether it be for something that's positive or negative, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the planet is just illuminating what needs to die and what needs to sort of be re um, you know, refocused, rebirthed in that way. So now that Pluto is moving into its direct form, a lot of us will have a um, tremendous amount of insight around uh, Venus themes, Libra themes, okay, balance themes, equality themes, themes of um, what we are prepared to integrate into our lives and what we feel is unnecessary. So it's kind of, it's very much a, a sharp cutting away of unnecessary values that no longer support us. That I would say is the tagline for the Pluto Direct is what values are not supporting me and how can I cut them out and get rid of what is no longer serving my purpose, what is no longer serving my mastery. That's another thing that, that is, I don't think is fully comprehended when it comes to archetypes is that Capricorn is the archetype of mastery and particularly self-mastery. And when you observe your life growth, and particularly from the age of like, say for instance, um, 21, 22, and you start observing what you would like to do in the future parts of your life or as you mature, Capricorn, you'll see that um, you are mastering something. So you kind of like invest your time into something and as a reward for investing your time into that, you gain mastery. So that's why Capricorn would be associated with the um, midheaven in terms of career because it's, a, it's consistent progress over time based on your values and what you feel your goals are. And then as you kind of influence that every day, it becomes the trajectory of your life. And that's why um, Capricorn in sort of classic books will correlate to your sense of um, career or direction because it's those types of behavior patterns. But of course that's changing. And that's what this conversation is about. It's that one of the things that seems to be very clear at the moment to me, and that has to do with, like I said, making sense of things. And I think the culprit on one level at the moment that that's so much about that is the Neptune in Pisces. Because Pisces in itself is in, in itself differentiated. There is no, there's no, there are no clear lines in Pisces. And so it can be intensely blurry between what seems to be real and what is not. And for most of you that are watching this video and you've had a, a Neptune transit, you'll know that a lot of the time you, you kind of are not certain about where the, the boundaries are. And so it becomes very unclear and things don't make sense. And of course, it's, it's, it's a very obtuse type of energy. So it's natural to, to feel as a collective, as Neptune transits through Pisces, a sense of things becoming erased from us. It's like we're almost going through a collective amnesia where things are moving so fast, trailblazing, and we're changing ourselves and radically altering the way that we perceive reality. And at the same time, we're also kind of experiencing the fading away of the old world. I don't know if you guys are sensitive to that, but I'm definitely sensitive to it. You can actually see the difference in um, traditional values, say 30 years ago, 40 years ago in people that, that are, you know, um, holding on, like 
in part of that reality versus say for instance the younger generation and how they interact with life it's like there are there's literally a rift between the two and it's not a negative or positive thing it's just how you can see how energy was and what energy looks like today and it's uh it's it's actually pretty interesting to observe it like when i go to the store for instance and i have to pick up a couple of things or i'm observing people's you know i'm always kind of observing my reality a kind of detached aquarius rising um observing you know people and observing how things are done and uh you know fashion trends and all that type of stuff and it's it's uh it's very clear anyway the point here is that with this neptune energy a lot of it contributes to living in a world right now where from my perspective at least and this kind of ties in with the sense of fear that i have and that is that um we can have something like uh, how many of you have gone into your news feed on that dreadful thing called facebook and you you observe a, a post that's done right and you and you kind of like read the post and you're like wow this is a really interesting statement being made by xyz like a, a you know nasa just decides has just discovered this and you're like oh that's a really far-fetched kind of concept how do i know it's true and this is what i think is deeply dangerous about neptune and pisces is we are exposed to a tremendous amount of information that's presented to us and because we are so overloaded psychologically with all of the the plethora of of information to be cognizant of everything is almost impossible and that's why I kind of say that Neptune Pisces also contributes to the amnesia because it's like we're, we're struggling so much to, well, at least I perceive it this way. I'm not saying that all of you have this, but I'm sure that if you really paid attention to some of the things that were there, at least once in a day, you, you would come across this, wow, that's a lot to process. You know, that like we scroll through the feed as an example, because everything, if we had to had psychologically attach to every single thing that was on our feed, we would literally spend the whole day just consumed by it. So it's almost impossible to a certain degree to really fully take in the totality of what is present in front of us right now. And so that leads to what I assume to be the experience of psychologically being overwhelmed by so much content that that's why I think marketing strategies um, have focused their attention to, you know, helping people become more um, uh, uh, attractive on a newsfeed because of the nature of that scroll. So what I'm saying here is, is that to get involved in a kind of article itself or something that's presenting an idea that seems to be true, a lot of the time it's like, unless you're actually physically there and you've gone through the money trail and you've observed if this person potentially has some form of interest in sharing that information that cre creates propaganda or fear, then it's not actually a hundred percent true to you, whether or not you actually feel like that's right or that's wrong. And I feel like there's a tremendous amount of danger in not really being critical enough in looking at what information seems to be correct and where the sources are coming from and what they are. And because of that being the case, it leads us to forming ideological perspectives on things that we defend because of the psychological sense of security held within that position. And that's really confrontational because it means that even as we move through this time, it's like there is a potential of us being, and I say this in a very sort of like strong way, possessed by um, content that can literally break families because people have different perspectives on some things. And that's natural. It's like, we're always going to have some aspect of our reality different to other people. And that's healthy because it represents the idea of differentiation. But it also means that we've got to develop the sense that freedom in the context of allowing another person to have their individual process be there, like they're seeing something. And that's why in the New Moon video, I said, it's really important to ask yourself the question, what can I contribute to this experience then take something away from it? Meaning that am I, are we engaging in every conversation? And this is again, the finger picture that I'm showing here in the background, right? So this, this picture, when we make connection, are we making connection because we want to feel right? We want to be empowered and what is our agenda? What is the motivation? Is it because we want our political perspective to be, um, in a, in a sense, 
like I said, like empowered. And so any Buddhist that challenges us, we don't ask ourselves the question, how does this conversation deepen my sense of understanding? That's not the first thing we do. Potentially it's more along the lines of like, Oh, I'm being like, this person is arguing with me. And so therefore we get into this kind of possession of arguments to behavior. And this is something that you can see all on, on the internet. And it's really fascinating because if you actually look at a, a Facebook feed, for instance, or any form of online interaction, primarily, I mean, even YouTube is an example. What it is, what the internet is, is a reflection of our own psychological and emotional dynamics. It's the projection of our limbic systems interacting with something. So it's like the internet is singularity and our perception and what we place into it becomes our own inner world. And you can have somebody that's existing in a, in, a, in a different part of the world that you've never met before, that you have no physical contact with or have developed any rapport with. So therefore, you're the, the oxytocin chemical reaction that takes place in order to open up to newer experiences is not developed. And so because of that, there's a natural disconnect. And now what we're doing is we're waking up, we're having a conversation with somebody, somebody sort of you know, he says something that contradicts our philosophical outlay of the perception of reality, and that creates a schism. And then in that sense, there's a, there's a disconnect because now somebody's pissed, off, pissed us off or we've pissed them off on some level and we get into this limbic argumentative state in the reality or in the world that is deeply like Neptunian. It's like you're not actually in front of the person even though it's there. So it's almost like you're arguing with your own point of view while somebody is triggering that point of view and they're doing the same to you in that sense. And it's like, we're arguing with our own psychological dynamics. And I don't know if this is something that, you know, most of you um, can, can look at and say, oh yeah, yeah, I've experienced that. And most of you, maybe you're not even looking at it through that lens, but it's interesting that, that it, presents itself in this way. And I'm super curious to hear if there are people, if you that are watching this have actually experienced that, not the, not the, the realization of your own psychological dynamics being interacted with. And then, you know, you almost arguing to defend your own point, not that, but more along the lines of how easy it is to get involved in conflict and that conflict being really just reflecting your limbic system's emotional dynamics. And then that becoming something where nobody's walking away from any awareness because nobody's actually looking at the awareness of the situation. It's not like the Trinity is, is there. And that's what actually this picture is about. It's like the realization that when we make a connection um, with, our, with our polarities of masculine and feminine energy together, it creates the third. And in that sense, it becomes a... It becomes a uh, like it becomes like the Vesica Pisces, for instance. Okay, and this is something that's that's really uh, influential in the way that we can awaken to higher states of awareness. So, as an example, like the the the, the logo itself for raising vibrations has got the Vesica Pisces within it and the Trinity, and the Trinity representing two people interacting with each other, and that experience creating a third dimension of awareness. And that's what I feel would be so beneficial that if we got into conversations on the internet that were about exploration, Jupiter conjunct the moon, right? Sitting over there. And it allowed us to see beyond the boundaries, Neptune in Pisces, we would be able to actually find some sort of understanding around the deep complexities of our social conditioning, Pluto through Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn, South Node there. Because remember, Saturn would have also gone uh, direct uh, with what, like half, uh, half a week ago, a week ago. So th there's a tremendous amount of energy at the moment that could, that could support the progression of understanding the, the, the dynamics of what it means to be human. And in particular, what shadow exists behind the scenes. But if we're being possessed by our own conflicts, which is Chiron and Aries in op opposition to the sun, as you can see there, right? We're never actually going to come out of any experience feeling as if we got something from it other than the glory of potentially making somebody else, I don't know, like, or, or our sense of, of truth being validated by other people jumping in and saying, yes, we agree with this person, or I agree with you. And 
the, the where I extracted this from is like observing multiple interactions online, particularly sort of like um, in in the Facebook uh, dynamic and other platforms exist as well. YouTube is another one of them. Um, where one person had written a view of something and then another person's view that contradicts that or says something other than that actually attacks that person. It's like we're so vulnerable at the moment to being divided by our own race because of the possession of our truths being the certain way. And there's almost like a, the, the chaos that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and the intensity of what it means to be alive at the moment is so much that it doesn't take much for us to be triggered to the point where we can then be into that depression state or into that state of, of fight or flight. And then we're divided and that's what's occurring. It's like, if we don't watch out, it's before we know it, we're actually going to be completely polarized and two sets of, of people that potentially have family ties or that are friends as an example can now be, in a sense, in a deep argumentative state about something, but it's not like, oh, I'm trying to understand you. It's my truth is better than yours or not even that. It can be just a combative sort of like, I'm not going to see past my own um, psychological stance, you know, whatever that might be. And it doesn't bring us anything. It doesn't bring us closer to understanding a life. It doesn't bring us closer to the idea of um, what it means to uh, develop higher understanding or deeper understanding of things, it polarizes. And I did say in the new moon uh, video that Libra does correlate to the archetype of cutting out things that no longer work for you. So there is a polarity to this. There is a paradox to this where it is also healthy to observe people that are in a sense supportive for, for who we are and we feel integrated and are, are and are really encouraging and can sometimes actually challenge us. And that's the thing here. It's like, it's healthy to be challenged on something. It, question, it allows us to question what we see, perceive, and, and, and understand. And it, it, it invites us to maybe go look deeper as an example, or grow, or take an aspect of the thing that we are interacting with and master it. But if we're consistently sort of like just having and this is a, a kind of very strong trigger word, an echo chamber. And I, I'm sensitive to that in my own channel, for instance. Like, I, I love you guys and you're amazing and, and the support that you provide. And, you know, you're always constantly saying thank you very much to Raising Vibrations for the value we provide. Um, but I'm also hyper aware of the fact that it can be easy that, let's say, somebody comes in and says, you know, Simon, like, um, my perspective on Chiron could represent this. And it, we can easily just see it as, well, that's not the truth and dismiss that. Whereas the value could potentially be in a discourse of communication around understanding something. And we are living in a time right now where Pluto is going to ask us these deeper questions. And if we're not able to see and work together in a way that is understanding something that is in a, in a, in a sort of like 3D perspective outside of ourselves, then we're never going to be able to actually solve the types of um, problems that are facing us today. And I don't mean it in the sense of like, um, because the classic thing that's running around the internet at the moment, which really sparked a lot of this for me was the, the climate change dynamic. You know, it's literally polarizing people because on one side you have a group of people that say climate change doesn't exist. And they're saying this, and you have another bunch of people on the other side saying climate change does exist. And instead of it being about the context of what that, what it means for us, we are in a sense being caught up in the shadow of our own psychological dynamics, which in and of itself is actually a very big part of the energy at the moment. It's like, we're actually seeing ourselves. We're seeing how divided we are. We're seeing how we don't get along and we see how we can be easily controlled by information and not being critical enough to discern what that information is actually trying to reveal and how that's supporting us or not, you know? Um, I'll give you an example of what I mean, and I'm sort of going to come to the end of this conversation very soon because I know that a lot of us have got lots of things to do and, you know, a 30 minute video is something that can be very long, but just recently, um, you know, I'd done a, a video or two. And one of the things that I noticed through an interaction was that I needed to specify on the video, like I'll teach evolutionary astrology or like I'll talk about EA 
And I think that end piece that I would like to put in it, because I'm going to release a video on how to understand the signs um, on the cusp houses, but from EA's perspective, because there are multiple ways in which people can interpret astrology, you know, and it can be very confusing to say somebody that's learning astrology, that's just taken on uh, sidereal astrology to see my video and say, but that's different to what I've just learned here. And so my sensitivity is, yeah, that's true. I don't want to confuse you if you're learning something new. So I'll create a specific tagline that says within the context or the realm of EA, this is what we do. And so that really, really draws a boundary between the two different paces and it allows somebody that's new to not be confused. And that's a kind of, attitude that I think is essential for us to take as we move forward in this time, not only within ourselves, but also as we try to understand the other, try to understand, hey, okay, so you're somebody that has been deeply affected by um, patriarchy as an example. Like, let's take women for instance, instance okay? Oh, it's natural for you to have a lot of collective rage and sadness around a world in which is predominantly sort of influenced by male dominance, right? And so it's natural for you guys to feel that way. And another thing is, is that for men, for instance, you know, their, their lack of connection to their own spirits with their own anima inside of themselves, their own feminine inside of themselves has led to a complete sort of disconnect from that. And, and that being a loneliness and emptiness, and that then manifesting itself as anger. And so you've got women on one side that are deeply sad and, and, and in pain. Feminine is all about pain in that way. And you have men that are angry. And it's like these, these components are present within our shadow. And if we don't look at them and we try to understand the other, we're not going to see holistically. And if we're not seeing holistically, we're never going to find balance between the polarities that are existing. And in that sense, whatever manifests from that place is not going to allow us to make the connection that we're so desperately needing to be made at this point in time as a human race, which is the realization of our separation. Okay, that is my little sort of speech slash uh, expression of influence and stuff that I wanted to put out today. I hope that on some level it provides value to you. If it does, you know, um, you please share it in the comments below. I love to, to hear uh, the, the, the information that you got from this and the extraction you got from this. And if you feel that you need to watch this video a couple of times over, that's amazing. And if you want to share this video because you feel it's um, something that can be influential, that's always amazing as well. And if you would like to work with me as an astrologer, um, in the description below is my website. And you can you know, check out myself or Jen, who does human design and astrology. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you again. Take care. Bye-bye.